So, um, I did bring my, my, my group with me, um, but I want to introduce to you what it is that I do. So, I know all of you know who I am. I'm Oscar Falka, who I've lived in this town for about 30 plus years. I don't know. I'm, I'm basically a cedar boy. Um, when I came here, there was a total of uh, about eight to ten athletes that were of color that played on SUU's football team. Um, and it's changed quite a bit since then. And I'm excited because it's like it's good to see so many different cultures in our little town. Um, however, today I want to share with you what I do for work. And I work with this I work with um, people right now all over the world. Um, I started this little thing called the O Show on Facebook. It went from there and it went on to Instagram and now it's on TikTok. My TikTok channel went from zero to about 90,000 in four days. 90,000 people viewed it. Right now it's at about almost 40,000 people follow it. And it's basically just talking about what we're gonna talk a little bit about today, right? We live in a world where youth are all going through a lot of struggles, and a lot of our families are struggling. I, I share with a lot of people about the struggles that we're having because we're sitting on a wave. Um, businesses are always looking for what is the wave that's gonna carry us onto wealth. And I'm here to share with you, we're on a wave of mental health. Mm -hmm. Mental health is going through a huge thing right now, and it almost seems like it's just not a big deal. But I will share with you that we have more families that are appearing in a lot of the treatment centers that I do work with, more now than ever before. And parents are always crying about what do we do to help our kids? How do I get my kid to listen to me? What can I do that would help them want to listen? And so you have a piece of paper with you and it's got a bunch of numbers on it. We're gonna give them a full of one minute. Okay. Alexis here will start you when I say go. When that one minute is up, she'll stop. What you're going to do is you're going to find the number one, and then you're just going to follow it in order. You're going to follow <coughs> one, two, three, four, five, all the way as many as you can within one minute. Ready? Begin. Twenty seconds. Ten. Five. And stop. How many of you got more than five? How many of you got more than ten? Keep your hands up. Fifteen. 20, 25, 30, 35. I got 32. You got 32. Beautiful. Wow. Let's give her a big hand. So, I got 32. <laughs> so, this little number game, this little number game, believe it or not, as simple as it may seem, there are tons of families that when they look at those numbers, it causes a lot of havoc in their way of thinking because it becomes chaotic. If you look at the numbers, they're all over the place. And so a lot of families are going through so much chaos that they don't know how to get things back in order and they don't know how to get things back to a position where they can feel like they can live whatever is called normal, right? So what they do is they come and visit Somebody like me, they can do it through the internet. Um, they can do it on the phone. 
Um, they can come to a residential treatment center that I might go in and do a presentation in, or I go into different businesses and talk to a lot of the youth that work in those businesses and share about learning how to create relationships, learn how to be taught, and also learn what correction looks like. However, in our families, what happens all the time is this little piece of paper represents chaos, but it also represents relationship. You just did a little something, and here I am still talking to you, and you're all looking at me like Oscar has something important to say, right? And though that might be true, there's a relationship being built between you and I right now. The more that I can strengthen the relationship between us, the better it is that you want to hear what I have to say, right? So the tone of my voice has to be one of two ways. Either I'm hardcore or I'm soft, so that you're sitting there going like this, well, I didn't, his voice doesn't really bug me, right? It's, it's actually pretty, I, I don't mind listening. So that's what happens quite often when I'm singing to the people that are listening. So when I start to listen, when I start to share with them what it is that I do, there are people hitting my, my site asking me, can you tell us what you do? And I start sharing with them, I'm a life coach. I help people and their families learn how to reunite. And before you know it, people are asking me all kinds of things. So I go from singing a ton to now sharing a ton of information. What I want you to learn today is everything that happens in all of our lives falls into a pattern. When we're in the chaotic state, there's a pattern that's happening. And as long as that pattern stays like that, then our family continuously is always feeling stress. How many of you have ever been there with your own family? Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen my house, but i got tons of kids and then nephews and nieces. And when they're all there, it's chaotic. And right? It's chaotic. And then when their parents are trying to get involved at my house, it becomes more chaotic. And then it causes frustration. Take your kids and go home. <laughs> no, take them, because I want to enjoy my own meal. <laughs> like, come on, bro. We're, we're all hungry. OK, sit down. Let's eat and be quiet. <laughs> if you came to a Tongan home, most of the time, when there's people eating, there's not a sound. It's quiet until everybody's full. Then all of a sudden, it becomes loud again, right? Patterns that we live by. So I'm going to give you a little pattern on these numbers that will help you, right, so that you understand that no matter what we battle through, we have to be able to recognize the patterns. So bring up the Right up here by the five, you'll see a little dot right next to the five, like a little period. You'll take your pen and draw it straight down. So you'll see another dot down there somewhere and match that dot. And then if you look on this side, right under the 17, there's another dot and draw a line straight across from there. You should have four quadrants. Everybody have four quadrants? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you look at your four quadrants, in this upper right hand corner you'll find the number one. In the left you'll find number two. On the bottom left you'll find three. The bottom right you'll find four and so on. If you just follow that pattern, you should do better than the first time. You got one minute. Ready? Begin. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't understand what you said. <laughs> so you have the quadrants? Yeah. Draw this one directly. Sorry about that. Draw this one directly over here. Do that. Just all the way through the 15. Yeah, there you go. Can you just go 20 seconds. One here, two here, three. <clears throat> and just follow the one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you'll be able to find the numbers. 10 seconds. You know, and to draw circles around the numbers, probably. 
It's only when my brain thinks. Did you? That's time. And time. Just by show of hands, how many of you got better? <laughs> Everybody. Okay. No, I didn't. How many of you didn't get any better? I did. Was it because you were talking? <laughs> I, actually, I just, it's the line that blocked me. <laughs> and that happens. That happens. Okay. So let me just share real quick so that we can keep moving on. Because I brought a surprise for you, okay? So when we start to figure out that there are patterns that we live through, then we're able to put things back into place and be able to understand what it is that we're trying to do. The simple pattern that I try to teach quite often and everything I do is very simple. I'm a simple, really simple guy. This morning I put out a TikTok and it basically talked about three things. Number one is relationships. Number two is teaching. And number three is correcting. The chaos usually begins because most people start off with correcting. We're always correcting. Why did you do that? Come here, fix this. Why are you not, didn't I not tell you to fix that? Fix it now. Right? Whereas, if we go back to what does the relationship look like, then all of a sudden it becomes a lot easier for us to want to hear something so then we can teach. Then when we provide the teaching, then we actually have something to correct. Does that make sense? And I'll just share a quick story. I have a set of twin boys. My twin boys, they were doing uh, dishes one day. They're probably like five. They're twins, right? So they came running into the room. They're like, Daddy, come, come look. Come look. Look at the dishes. And I'm like, uh-oh. You guys did dishes? We did dishes. I come out. We walk in. The whole kitchen looks pretty dang clean. And I'm pretty excited until the, we opened up the dishwasher. When we opened up the dishwasher, there's literally dishes stacked in the dishwasher. The <laughs> cups were turned up everywhere, right? They even tried to fit a pot in there on top of things. Forks and knives are just thrown into the dishwasher and not in the little slots, right? And what hit me was is that I was like, oh my gosh, more work for me. Until they looked at me and then it hit me. I can't get upset. They don't even know what they're doing. They were trying to do something good. And I can use this as a lesson to teach. Or I could make it about me and what it is they just did that just made my day more difficult. So I literally stopped and I said, come here, guys. And I had them unload the dishwasher. And they're like, did we do something wrong? No. You did it. But Daddy didn't teach you what it is that we do with the dishes. And they were standing there like, well, well isn't, isn't it all we do is put it in there? No, there's certain ways we have to do it. So they stood there and they watched me as I started to load the dishwasher, plate by plate, putting forks, knives, and spoons where they go, taking the cups and turning them upside down, and putting everything. You see this one? This is called a pot. We don't put that in there with everything else because then nothing else will get washed. And they're just kind of giggling. They're like, Daddy, you're so funny. <laughs> so then we stood there, and they're just watching me as I'm washing the big pot, and the dishwasher gets going. It took them probably like two or three other times to really figure out how it worked. But can you see all the things that happened during that time in stopping myself from getting frustrated because of the way they loaded the dishwasher, and then taking the opportunity to make it a relationship building moment? a moment to teach, and also a moment to correct. So in the work that we do, that's what we talk about all day long. And so I'd love my girls to please join me so that they can help me with this presentation, okay? I'd like to ask you to do me a favor. Can we have you pick up your table and move that way, and then you guys can follow too, so that we can stay in front. The first
So, most of you know, you guys are welcome to come in. Sorry, but we're out of seat, but you're welcome to come in. We were just talking about how important it is to allow our club to grow. Our club meetings should feel like this all the time, right? So, those of you that are not members of Rotary that are here, you've all been invited by me to bring these girls, but at the same time, take a good look at what this club does. Okay? I brought this presentation today because I want our club to understand that we don't only affect people all over the world. We affect people right here in our town. We have these young ladies here. There's probably four or five of them that didn't come today because of therapy, but they wish that they could be here. The whole goal of our whole entire team is to show off our kids. When we become parents, that want our kids to be seen is what it is. And so in building relationships and teaching and correcting, that's what we're doing today in helping all of you to see what we do. So we prepared a couple of songs for today. I'm gonna to have them sing their first song, then I'll share a little bit, then I'll have them sing their last song and we'll be all done for the day. So. So this little song that we're singing for you, some of you, if you were at the Christmas party, heard this song. It's called Reflection, right? And it's one that I teach pretty much everywhere I go. Because the bottom line is we have to be able to recognize ourselves when we look into that water or into that mirror. And sometimes when it comes to our children, or even us, we're not all that comfortable looking in and seeing that reflection. Sometimes there are things that happen that causes a lot of fear for a lot of people. And so sometimes when we act out, the norm doesn't recognize why we act out. They just know that there's something about that person. They're crazy. They're nuts. And what we don't know is it's a lot deeper.
before and everywhere that I speak, I use a, a process that's called positive peer culture. The reason why I use it is because we live in a world that needs to learn how to build relationships. And we are in a relationship business. That is what we do. There are still businesses out there that work through, you do it my way or you're in trouble. And that's not the way the world works anymore, right? Positive peer culture is a way for these students to learn how to help each other. And there are days where it's absolute hell. And then there are days where everything is peaceful. And it works that way in our homes too, right? But I want you to watch this. Who can tell me what is low self-image? Please stand. Um, it's a feeling of like kind of not feeling worth it on the inside and the outside and just like, I would say judging yourself no matter what people say. Thank you. After we go through low self-image, what is usually the next part to it? Please stand. Yeah. Speak loud. Um, it's usually inconsiderate of others. Why do we become inconsiderate of others? Go ahead. Seven. Okay. Because we have low self-image. Please self stand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's because we have low self-image. Thank you. What's the next one after inconsiderate of others? Go ahead. Please stand. Um, um, inconsiderate of self. And why do we do that? What does our low self-image do to us, and why are we inconsiderate of others and can inconsiderate of ourselves? Go ahead, Mom. Um, it's be like, wait, can you say the question again? <laughs> <laughs> so, why do we tend to be inconsiderate of others and inconsiderate of ourselves when we go through? Low self-image. Um, low self-image is for. Can I say what it is to me? Yes. Um, low self-image for me is like how I think about myself and how I look on the outside and how I feel on the inside. Um, so yeah. <laughs> is there anybody else that can add to that? <laughs> Never mind. Go ahead. Um, I honestly think that when we are considered others and in considered yourself, it is because of low self-image and we feel, if we, um, we feel like, I don't know what the word is, but, um, in, ah, the need to project it onto others. Yeah, the need to project it onto others. And, um, yeah. Thank you. You want to go? Uh, go ahead. Um, well, for me, low self-image is like feeling like rejected and feeling like I am not worth anyone's time. And so I feel like a lot of times I'm inconsiderate <clears throat> of others and myself because I feel like when I'm inconsiderate of myself in general, I feel like I am inconsiderate because I feel low with myself and because I feel like my, like I feel like I'm rejected all the time, so why care about myself, you know? And then um, I feel like inconsiderate of others mainly because I want to make ev everyone else feel the same as I do. Thank you. Yes? Um, like with my low self image and all that jazz. Um, with like inconsiderate of self, I just keep telling myself like I can't amount to anything. Like all these people are higher than me. Like why should I try and even like show them that I'm not? And like it leads into inconsiderate of others because I'm not sharing like kind of my point of view on situations and like just ignoring everything since you know I feel that way. Thank you, Rachel. You got something? Please. Yes. Hi. Okay. Um, for me, low self-image, if I'm being inconsiderate of others, it's because, like, I feel so low of myself that I want other people to be low with me. And um, when I'm inconsiderate of myself, it's because I feel like, yeah, like, I'm worth nothing. And so why care about myself? Thank you. Who can tell me about fronts? <laughs> um. With fronting, it's like you are acting happy when you are sad, and you don't really reach out to other people, and you just keep everything bottled up inside until you can't hold it up anymore, and then eventually explodes everywhere. Thank you. Anybody can add to that? Come on. Um, 
I see fronting as putting on an act or show and letting everyone know that you're okay or letting everyone know that there isn't a single thing wrong when actually everything inside of you is tumbling and falling and it's just kind of unraveling like a thread. So here's a question for you. How many of you are still pretty upset with your parents? Claire, can you share? Please do. I think I'm still upset with my parents because I feel I still don't know why I'm here. And I feel like I'm upset because when I did leave, I felt like like I feel like their lives got better. And so <coughs> I feel like, you know, what was the point of me even being here and what was the point of like being alive? Because if I wasn't like good enough to be in their family, I had to go to treatment. That's why they want me off. Thanks, Claire. Can you tell us about your parents? so mad at my parents was just because like when I first came here like I was just pissed hell pissed um and like to this day my family sends me letters like almost daily and just like tells me that they love me and I just get confused because if you like sent me away like why do you still love me and care for me even though I've done all these things to you thanks Rachel yes Anna. can you come over here because you speak really quiet <laughs> Bono, when you first came here, can you stand up, please? How old were you when I when I first met you? Four, mentally. I'm actually 14, but <laughs> <laughs> mentally I was four. Can you share with them why? Because um, when I was younger, I missed like an area in my childhood that I didn't have like the attention I needed, or I didn't have what I needed, and so when I came here, I felt like oh, I can actually be myself and relive that age. Um, so I did that for a while. And who named you what? I don't remember. <laughs> did we call you by name or did we call you by age? Age. So what was your name for a while? Four-year-old. <laughs> yes, four-year-old. How old are you now? Um, Eleven, sometimes twelve. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. I appreciate it. So, I just want to share this with you really quickly. Can you come here, Cece? Every one of these children have different stories. Um, and this is a really special story to share with all of you. How old are you? 14. Can you come from that? How old? 13. And how old are you, how old are you at? And when you act like a four-year-old, what do you think? What does a tantrum mean? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so recognize this. It's easy to be 13 right now. Does that make sense? When she's somewhere where she's comfortable, all of a sudden the four-year-old will show up. And until we can get her to a point where she can be 13 all the time, it's really hard. And sometimes, as people, we're learning every day that, oh, please recognize that she's being four right now. 
because sometimes, and I'll, and I'll tell you this, this one right here has a lot of things that she's gone through, right? Like what? And when did you get adopted? Last year. At 13, right? So, anyway, this is Cece, and she's never highlighted. That's why I wanted to highlight her today. Mm -hmm. so, I know that we're out of time, and we have one more song for you, but I just wanted to share with all of us what we spend our time doing at Renewed Hope Ranch or in the facility that we work with our young girls, because I know that you have figured that out. We work on relationships, we work on teaching, and we work on making connections. We talk a lot about positive peer culture because everything goes back to self-image. Self-image leads us to being considerate of others, being considerate of self, have authority problem, mislead others, mislead ourselves. <coughs> Drug and alcohol problem, what else is there? Money. Easily angry, trying to others. Okay, stop. That's great. So there's over 12 of them that they work on pretty much daily, and we have these discussions. So when a girl goes a little bit cuckoo, just like one of our staff will go cuckoo, we always go back and we check the 12. It allows us to put ourselves in check. So, oh, can I have my three girls come up, please? They weren't sure if they were doing this. I told them I would tell them when they get here. Fantastic. <laughs> 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 you can pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to Can everybody else be prepared to sing? Out loud, please. <laughs> I need to believe that only I can chase my dreams. That, that no, no one, one can break me unless I break myself. There must be about a million ways to let yourself be destroyed. I was born in this world in all its gentle bitterness. I cannot say that I do not want, want to, to drown. drown. I wake up submerged beneath the heavy cold, but I can still breathe. So you're all an act of our own choices. And our own existence. Which is also our own choices. So, this show must go on, and I will never end. Just like the love this earth has given, we need to believe that we are different, and not just different, but full of love. And if we live every moment believing that, then the chaos in our heart will become a beautiful thing. So chaos, keep me wild, keep me free, leave us never, so that our brokenness will be the only beauty the world will ever see. There is so much to find within all the nothing. For sometimes I feel as if we've lost it all. Mind and soul. We spend our whole lives trying to tell the difference between what is real and what is not, between what we love and what we do not, which is okay. I have found heaven and hell within people. There, there are more truths inside us buried deep that could never be ignored, that no God nor science could ever allow to be revealed. These are our hidden secrets. I need to believe that I can carry all our pieces, that only we can light the fire within, that we are a beautiful thing, and the world will never cease to forget my name. And when it is all over, nothing says more than all the moments that made us feel free, regardless of pain, regardless of struggle. So that one day that we can have a world that's better for not just us, but our children and their children's children. So we can have a place of love, happiness, joy, regardless of pain and suffering, which can only be done as a unit. So we have to make this world a better place for not just you, but for me.
you know, for those of us who got to see you perform at the Christmas party, it was such a treat. And today was just a wonderful encore. I am so incredibly impressed with your singing. I think you should record a couple of those beautiful songs and put it on the market because they're wonderful. Um, the fact that you were able to stand up and, and tell us how you were feeling um, it's awesome. I mean, this isn't really an intimidating group, but it's a large group. And just the fact that you have the um, self-esteem to get up there and speak to us is absolutely amazing. So thank you so much um, for coming. Um, your last song, Making It a Better Place, for you and for me, that's what our club is all about. You know, service above self. And, and we're trying to do that in the community. So it was a good reminder for all of us, that song. So thank you again.